Welcome to Super Comics Challenge, the game show where cartoonists match wits and pencils. And here is your host, Jersey Droz. Hi there. Thank you for watching Super Comics Challenge, the drawing game show. My name is Jersey Droz. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, which is to say a person who draws graphic novels and then teaches people how to make graphic novels. And... We're about to have a good time doing different competitive games with a bunch of different cartoonists. But first, I need to introduce the, the commentator for this episode, Jeremy Burley. Hi, Jersey. How you doing? <laughs> Jeremy Burley, longtime friend and cartoonist, working in the toy industry. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what kinds of things that you do. Well, during the day, I design toys, but at night, I sweat and bleed comic books. I uh, am currently writing and drawing a self-published comic book called Morning Star. It's uh, the story of Lucifer's Fall from Heaven, told as a Western. If you ever wondered how a good angel goes bad, this is your story. Um, and beyond that, I draw prints and, uh, and other illustration and share them all online on my YouTube channel. Your YouTube channel, which is just under the name Jeremy, G-E-R-I-M-I. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Jeremy, for being here uh, to be the commentator on the show. Um, so I guess we should meet our contestants now. So how about I turn it over to the game board and hand it the, car the microphone over to you so we can meet some of the people that we're going to talk that we're going to be competing in the drawing challenges today. OK, first up, Elizabeth, talented young cartoonist who just published her First mini comic, Duke and Jack and Halloween. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you doing? Good. Well, you know, I would love to know who are Duke and Jack. Duke and Jack, they're crime fighting dogs, but in the story, they take a break of that and uh, they have to find costumes for a party. Oh, it must be really hard to find that. You know what? I can't wait to read the book because I've got to, I look forward to finding out what they, what they ended up dressing as. So what is your favorite thing to draw, Elizabeth? I really like drawing dogs. Ah, that makes sense. Do you have a favorite breed? Yes, my favorite breed is a lab. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so... With your labs, do you have a lab? You, your dog? No, I don't. But we have two dogs. Oh, and I bet they were inspiring for uh, for Duke and, for Duke and Jack. Mm -hmm. Great. So, what is your favorite thing about making comics? I like it because um, it's fun, and you get to. Uh, once you're done, family members, they want to buy it from you once you're done. <laughs> it's always nice to get the, the, the family support from family, friends, and getting your work out there to new readers. That's great, Elizabeth. Thank you. All right. So who else, who else do we have lined up to compete in some drawing challenges today? Well, we've got Aaron Polk, great uh, colorist and, and cartoonist artist. Um, you know, he's working currently. Are you currently doing the colors on Dogman? Uh, so I work as uh, primarily a flatter and a color assistant on the Dogman books. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also worked on as the colorist for the new series, uh, Investigators, that just came out this year. Uh, I also did a book last year called Hawking, which is the biography of Stephen Hawking. Uh, yeah, there's a ton of ton of stuff that I've worked on to the point where like I forget pretty regularly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a great, you know what, to be so busy that you can forget what you've worked on. That's pretty awesome. It means you're busy and keeping a lot of work out there. You know, something I've always wanted to ask colorists and color artists, when you work on in color all the time, do you still have a favorite color? Uh, I do. And it is very apparent apparently, uh, because I will sometimes have publishers go, hey, you're using blue a little too much. Stop it. <laughs> so so it, sometimes it does bleed over into my work. But yes, blue is my favorite color. 
<laughs> well, it's a very trustworthy color. It, you know, it communicates dependability. So it, it speaks well that that's your, uh, your favorite color. You know, you've been working for a while now. What is the earliest thing you can remember drawing? Ooh, from like my childhood? As far back there, as you can remember. Yeah, there is a picture uh, at my parents' house that my mom ended up like, I don't even know how she did it. I don't know if she like used markers or something, but she ended up drawing it on a shirt and I gave it to my dad and I think I was three years old. And basically it looks like a potato that has a smiley face on it. And it just has the letters P-I-H because apparently that's all I could write. <laughs> and that is the <laughs> earliest thing that I know of that I made. Well, that's hey. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Already creating characters at an early age. It's like you oh, knew yeah. you were going to uh, love, love comics from, from early on. That's great. Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Of course. And we've got Greg Shegel. Hello. <laughs> Creator of, of PIX and PAW, Professional Animal Wrestling Syndicate, and you know, other works. Please tell us about your work. Uh, I, like my, my peers here, am a cartoonist and writer and artist of all kinds of stuff. I did do uh, these graphic novels on that side. There they are. Uh, these Pix graphic novels over on my shoulder. Um, although you can't see that, you're seeing something else. Uh, and I have a coloring book called Unique Corns, which is unicorns that are not horses. Uh, and I worked on SpongeBob comics for a bunch of years, uh, more probably like, yeah, like 10 years or so. Um, and then there's Paws, which is my animal wrestling book that I'm trying to sell. And yeah, I just, I draw a lot. I've been drawing for most of my life and I like making up stories. Wow, Greg, you know, I mean, from, from drawing different animals as unicorns to doing animal wrestlers, superheroes, pixies, it looks like you've drawn about everything. After all this time you've been working, is there anything that you have a hard time drawing? Is there anything that you try to avoid? Like, ooh, I don't want to do this thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> I don't love drawing mechanical things. So cars, buildings, um, anything that is that is rigid and mechanical. So when I'm at conventions and stuff, when people ask for a transformer, no offense to Jerry, uh, to Jersey, uh, it's just like I don't want to draw transformers. There's <laughs> Everything about it is mechanical, um, and I, I prefer drawing more organic, uh, more organic stuff. So yeah, cars can be dodgy, depending on the but, angle but, of the car. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but dodges, I can draw any dodge. <laughs> believe it or not, no car. Yeah, cars and mechanical stuff are, are the least fun. It's, it, that's when it feels like work. Now, what about a robot animal? That I'm down with. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. Because you, you can, I mean, to a degree, like what are they, what is it, Beastmasters? Those are Transformers, beast, yeah. right? I'd exactly. rather just, I'd rather just draw the beast, like <laughs> a beast without the mastery. Well, you can always just draw a lion and put a bolt on his neck. Yes, a Frankenstein lion, absolutely perfect. Frankenstein lion. Franken lion. That's a, all right. That might be the next coloring book. <laughs> awesome. Franken <Thank> zoo. You. <laughs> Well, we're all here for a drawing challenge. We've got our group of our, our panel of talented creative artists. So I guess it's time to get started. I guess it's time to get started. So we're going to have a couple different drawing games. I'm going to issue the challenges to the team. You are each going to have one minute and 32 seconds to take on each drawing challenge. And Jeremy, Jeremy will be here to either uh, praise you, harass you, or encourage you as you work and notice the things that you're doing. Uh, so the first challenge is... Uh, a what it's not game. I'm going to make a shape. You have to turn into whatever that shape is not. And I'm going to draw the shape on each of your boards right now. And you will have to turn it into whatever it is, whatever it is not. So let me grab my pen and for Elizabeth. Okay. So this, whatever Elizabeth draws can't be this thing. And this guy looks like a familiar, uh, it's Pikachu. So not a Pokemon. It is not a, it is a Pokemon-esque character with a lightning bolted tail. And yep. whatever Elizabeth turns into, it cannot be that character. So this is going to be a tough challenge. That's a recognizable silhouette. 
And now we see a long cloaked silhouette and I almost thought it was Dracula, but no, it looks instead like a um, a space knight or, or not wizard. A, not a, a space a, wizard. <laughs> <laughs> A not, space not, wizard with some sort of wand. Not not a not a Sith. Not mm-hmm. not any kind of like uh Star Warsy person with a laser sword. And then not for at all. And for Aaron, we'll do something a little bit similar. And Let's see here. Ooh, look at this. A little guy, also not a wizard, but perhaps a, a pointy-eared, shaky-armed elven uh dwarf creature. Also perhaps <laughs> from space or not, but whatever it's gonna turn into, it can't be that character. Now so here are the rules. Yeah. Yes, this will this will be an interesting challenge. It cannot be those things, and you can add to the drawing, but you cannot subtract. You cannot erase any of the lines that I threw down on there. And you'll have a minute and thirty seconds in order to execute the challenge. Uh, contestants, are you ready? Yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so confident. Yes, that's 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 very uh, uh, enthusiasm. Here we go. The clock starts the moment the music starts. Ready, set, go. All right, so our artists are diving in there. I see, you know, Aaron's jumping out with an early lead, and it looks like, is this a book? I can't quite tell. I almost feel like I'm afraid to say too much because I don't want to lead the audience and have, you know, I don't want to give Aaron into Oh, it is a book. No, no, it is a book. (laughs) I see. Oh, wow. And Greg has gone right into a full-on face. Look at that hat. And it immediately reads as a hat. Uh, you know, Craig, I noticed, is it difficult drawing hats on characters? Uh, I don't, I don't find, again, maybe it depends on the hat, but no, it actually means you don't have to draw any hair, which is pretty convenient. Wow, um, and, El- and Elizabeth already put a collar on this. You know, you are famous for drawing dogs, but Elizabeth, it looks like you went for the kitty motif. <laughs> Have you put any kitties in any of your comics? Maybe as villains or enemies of, of uh... Yeah, yeah. 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's see here. Wow. This guy. You know, Aaron, I... I... Those are some serious eyebrows. Are those eyebrows oh, yeah. yours? <laughs> I mean, have you ever watched any old fantasy movies? It's all about the eyebrows. Ah, uh, yeah, they're almost. You, yeah. But oddly enough, you didn't go for the unibrow. And and, uh, I did not. No, that concludes the round. In other words, <laughs> round is over. So, okay, so now we're going to put it to the crowd. Anybody who's watching this live, if you want to ch- chime in by cheering at the scream as I call for us to vote with applause for each contestant. So, first, let's have a round of applause, see who votes for Elizabeth. A lot of support for Elizabeth. And let's see who here votes for Aaron. <laughs> Looks like the kid contingent voted for Aaron. And let's see who votes for Greg Shegel's face chewing on a piece of straw. All right, fine. Looks like they gave you points for trying, Greg. Uh, it sounds like the enthusiasm was in Elizabeth's corner. Do you agree with that, Jeremy? Oh, I agree. She won far and away on this. <laughs> now, right. I am I am curious. Elizabeth, when you first started going into this, you, it seemed like you were boxed into doing some sort of animal. Did you, when you first started, did you think, was there maybe something other than an animal you were going to try and do? I could have turned it into like a lightning monster. Ah, lightning monster. That would have also been an interesting choice, but I'll tell you, I love this kitty. This he's got a lot of character. <laughs> and you even got a chance to start putting some color in there, some gray fur. I've got a cat that has a white and gray fur, so this is almost like a portrait of my kitty. Fantastic. And uh and Aaron, so so tell us, is this a Yeti or Wizard? Oh, it's a grand wizard. How grand dare wizard. you assume that it's a yeti? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the facial hair. The facial hair reads, and you know, I mean, those beautiful eyebrows, I've seen some yetis with some, some long hair, but you make a good point because yetis, 
they're not big on reading. They should definitely get to the library I more know. often. I agree with you, but the key difference between wizard eyebrows and Yeti eyebrows is Yetis do not have access to palmade the way that wizards do. <laughs> oh, see? <laughs> Beautiful. You, you take all yes, these things into account. See, that's the mark of a consummate cartoonist, thinking about the full life of the character, making them breathe. And Greg. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So... Is this guy a farmer? Is this guy a city guy who's out on uh, on Long Island during the, the summer breaks? I mean, wh what's going on with him chewing on the grass here? These are great questions. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, this was being made up from the top down in a minute and a half. I did not have the, the depth of history that Aaron put into his character. This was a case of, I cannot make this a space wizard. So it is a long-haired man with a very large piece of wheat in his mouth and a very small hat. And it's not really showing up as much, but he does have a necktie on. So I don't know. I don't know what his deal is. I know that I would not invite him over for dinner. Well, Greg, if, if this guy had a voice, tell me, what would he sound like <laughs> and what would he say? Oh, boy. I don't do voices so good. Um <laughs> It'd be very high pitched, really high pitched, like uncomfortably high pitched. Okay. Like it would hurt your ears. And he would say things like, I don't like in here. Things like he'd really, he's like very whiny. <laughs> a little bit of a complainer. <laughs> uh, not even a little bit. Like this guy's just like, my hat's too small. My unibrow's too big. Like it's just like a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, Elizabeth, it looks like you won that round. Let's throw it back to Jersey. And what's the next challenge? All right, the next challenge. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, so for the next challenge, I'm going to need a prompt from each of the contestants. You are going to make a choice before you even find out what you're going to be drawing uh, between the words nasty or nice. So Elizabeth, choose between if I if I threw those two words at you, which one would you prefer? If I said nasty or nice? Was that nice? Elizabeth gets nice. All right. Greg, what do you choose? Nasty. Nasty. All right. You say that like I, I should have known. Uh, of course. <laughs> Aaron, what do you choose? Well, Elizabeth won the last round, so I'm going to have to go with her choice as well. All right. Going to go for nice. Nice. Okay, so the, the thing that you're going to draw is going to be of that disposition, as if you didn't know. So, Elizabeth, whatever I give you for your prompts, you're going to draw a nice thing. And actually, contestants, erase the boards, please, while I issue the challenge. So break out your erasers and erase your quadrants. Um, I'm going to give each of you two creatures that spend a lot of time in water, and you're going to have to merge them together into a composite animal, and it's going to have to look either nice or nasty based on what you chose. So I put it to the crowd to determine who gets what sea creatures or creatures that spend a lot of time in water. And Aaron, you have, since you chose nice, you are drawing a nice dolphin slash catfish, merging a dolphin and a okay. catfish. It has to be nice. Greg, since you chose nasty, you are drawing an octopus shark, a nasty octopus shark. And Elizabeth, you, since you chose nice, you're going to draw a nice eel penguin. Penguins spend a lot of time in the water, even though they're not a fish. So an eel penguin. Does everybody understand their challenge? And so yeah. far, Elizabeth is up one point. Aaron and Greg currently have zero. So this is for another point. When the music starts, we will all begin drawing. And everybody remember their animals? Does anybody need a reminder? Nope, you got it? Okay. Then here we go. The moment the music starts, you are drawing. Ready, set, go. All of these are some really challenging uh, creatures to go after and mashing them up. I mean, I look at this guy. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> Greg, <laughs> Greg's guy, he went straight for the, the attitude. Whatever creature you put those teeth on is going to look nasty. He is cranky. Maybe he's cranky. He's got so many arms. Elizabeth, she's got a, a penguin. He, uh, you know, I'm curious, you went with a, a nice round shape to him. You know, round shapes are generally considered to be friendly and uh, they're warm and loving. So I like the, the choice you went to there. I like that he's got a nice eel tail tacked on oh, there. Oh, no. 
Oh, Aaron just made a faux pas. He had a nice line and lost it. He was seconds. Just the body? No. <laughs> I will tell you that that uh, that catfish dolphin looked very sweet and loving. I was gonna tell you at first the body almost seemed a little bit whale like, but I, you just smooth that face out there, and uh, wow, those are some nice kissy little catfish lips. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. I, I, I've got to tell you. Do you find it difficult to stay in character? Because this catfish almost looks more sexy than nice. Ten seconds. Oh, you don't want to mess with the catfish dolphins of the sea. They're the true sirens. (laughs) That is time. All right. So even if you're not done, pencils down, everybody. All right. So, Jeremy, hand over to you to walk us through what everybody did. All right, Elizabeth, I see here, again, you jumped to adding some color. You know, you have defining the uh, the white part of the the penguin's belly versus the uh, the gray on the face. But I am curious. You started putting some lines around the uh, the pink pe- nice penguin eel. What are those supposed to represent? Because the eel is electric, those are supposed to be like little lightning things around him. Ooh, wow! It? I didn't even think about that. At first, I was thinking maybe a penguin was shivering, but electric lightning <laughs> penguin. That's great. I'm curious because this is a nice penguin eel. Do you think what kind of things do you think a penguin eel could use their electricity for to help people? Um, if the power went out, he could help do it and turn the power back on. That's great. If someone's Nintendo Switch goes out, they're like, "Oh no, I can't play Animal Crossing." <laughs> but here comes our penguin electric penguin eel to help. If you had to come up with a name off the top of your head, what's the silliest, craziest name you would throw on this guy? Poppin. Poppin. <laughs> and I said, guy could be a girl. You know? Great. I love Poppin. I will definitely want to invite them over on the next blackout I have. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at, uh, at Greg's drawing. <laughs> Wow, he's got the bloodshot eyes, tentacles, he's in there. Now, what is that around his mouth? So, he's nasty. Mm-hmm. So that's like a, like a slobber, kind of a foaming at the mouth nastiness. In hindsight, probably should have made it green. You know, mucus, boogers, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> So, you know, if I get no if I get no cheers, I understand why now. <laughs> well, you know, that's something that the editor would probably ask you to change in revisions. Now, here is a question for you. Yeah. Foam get the mouth, slobber, nasty. Can octopus sharks get rabies? Oh, they're they have all they're they're like out of the gate. Rabies. <laughs> <laughs> they're born rabid. Born out of the gate, out of the pod, whatever, whatever. Octo sharks come from. <laughs> if it's an egg, I don't know. But whatever spawn, whatever from whence they are spawned, they they are rabid out of the gate for sure. Oh wow! It's like these creatures might be responsible for spreading you know, rabies to dogs in the first place. A lo- innocent dog just walking along the beach, you know, that, that tentacle comes out. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's game. It's 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 rabies time. Oh wow! You know what? Your job is to do a nasty creature and this guy is nasty i gotta tell you nailed it on this one (laughs) thank you aaron Aaron, what do you got well i shot myself in the foot (laughs) i was expecting the eraser to work like an eraser and instead it erased a very nice line that i had drawn and uh this is what i did with the rest of my time (laughs) you know but you, you know what you recovered nicely though when i saw that line disappear i thought "Ooh, that's gonna hurt him but you it did yeah. <laughs> but you, you came back in time and you really, you know, this, I was initially thinking kind of sexy, but that's just because catfish have big lips. She's definitely got a nice smile to her. Looks very, oh, yeah. very loving and nurturing. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to do this whole thing with adding a little bit more of an extra cat in there because mm-hmm. I think that cats look a little bit more friendly than regular catfish do. Mm-hmm. Catfish are just a little bit alarming. Yeah. Now, I have one question. 
Did yes. you ever consider, because this is a catfish dolphin, what were your thoughts on the blowhole issue? Well, you know, it's a little hard with catfish heads because they don't have blowholes, they have gills. And so I was really, you know, this whole thing about me thinking in depth about my character, what does it breathe? Because dolphins breathe oxygen and catfish, they have gills, they breathe underwater. I, I honestly wasn't sure. What is its lung capacity? That one had me stumped. <laughs> wow. I mean, it seems to me the only answer there would have been to throw some gills on the top of its head. <laughs> that would have worked too, but ran out of time. Exactly. These challenges are tough and thinking on your feet's real, real difficult. Well, let's see what the audience thinks All about right. your guys' work. All right, so we're turning it over to the crowd. Everybody applaud and scream at your screens in order to vote for. Let's hear it for Elizabeth. Uh, there's, there's actually like a little extra scream at the end for Elizabeth's. Wow, well done. Uh, let's hear it for Greg's. Oh, whoa. Ah. Wow. Ending ovation. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. And they just they keep going. All right, we heard you. We heard you. All right. Lau, let's hear it for Aaron's. Oh. Uh, yeah. A little bit of an A for effort. Yeah, that's to be expected. All like right, it well. It sounds like there's a lot of enthusiasm for Elizabeth's and Greg's, but I think Greg's went over by just a tiny bit, so Greg takes the round with one point. Wow. Congratulations, Greg. All right, Thank contestants, you. please clear your boards for the next round. The next round is going to be for two points. Ooh. So, in other words, this could be a winner-take-all. If Aaron wins the round, Aaron could still come out ahead and take the whole game. But Elizabeth and Greg are both tied with one point apiece. So... This, this is for, as they say in old-timey days, all the marbles. All right. So this next round is a sound design challenge. Sound is an interesting thing in comics because comics is you're representing in a world of five senses with only one sense, with just visuals. In other words, smell has to be visualized, touch has to be visualized, and also sound has to be visualized. This is something I think you, you've worked really hard on yourself in your work, right, Jeremy? Um, you know, I, I'll, I do, but for a, a lot of times when I go for sound, when I, my, I'm one of the people who likes to just draw the sound as in bang or boom or pow. Like I try to use or drip, but I will try to do the wording in mm. an interesting, unique way. So I try to make not so much come with the onomatopoeia. Mm -hmm. I try to do it direct. I, I come from the school and I know it's a debate between coming up with words that sound like what the thing is versus just doing the word itself, but yep. beautifying it. Yep. That, that, that's an interesting distinction and dichotomy to draw because I know that I go on the other end of the spectrum sometimes to the point where it becomes almost nonsense. Greg will back me up on this. Aaron has colored some of the pages where I've designed some of these sounds where it's, it defies you to actually clearly read it because I'm really trying to go for like what's the actual quality of the sound based on the onomatopoeia and the, the shape, size, line, and color. So this round, you are, I'm going to play a sound for you. Everybody's going to have their own sound. And your job is in one minute and 32 seconds, visualize, draw the sound effect based on that sound. What does that sound look like? What color is that sound? What kind of lines would you use for that sound? This is no small task, which is why it's for two points. So are you ready? Um, Elizabeth, this is the sound you are going to draw. Listen carefully, okay? Do you want me to play that one more time? No, you're good? Okay. Aaron, this is your sound. One more time. One more time. Here we go. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Greg, here is your sound. Do you need me to play that again? 
No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for all the marbles, two points. Uh, as soon as I play the music, uh, begin drawing your sound. Ready, set, go. All right, so converting sound into art and line and words, that's one of the toughest challenges a cartoonist face. So I really see here, you know, everyone's kind of getting in there. I see that Aaron is leaning into color right there. Now, I'm I mean, curious. that is my job. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And that's also something that we didn't mention. You know, often people think about line texture and, and you know, shape and weight, but the color of sound. So you decided to go up a warm palette, 60 seconds. <laughs> oh, gosh. I did, yes. <laughs> Now, I see, Greg, you've already, you know, you had a mouthful to go with with that sound. You're definitely filling up the screen with that. So yeah. how does, if this were a shorter sound effect, would you also take that into account in terms of the amount of space you give it in terms of the uh, the drawing board, your drawing Sure. Area? Yeah, if it, was, if it was like a whisper sound, it would be very small relative to what else was happening. Uh, but yeah, I was I was given a sound, quote unquote, which was uh, <laughs> very soundy. <laughs> and Elizabeth, I see you've got a great sound effect in there. You decided to go with an old classic. And, you know, I, I like the fact that uh, you've got some nice, thick, bold, you know, words as opposed to skinny words. Was there any point in you laying this out that you were thinking about how thick or thin the letters should be? Well, yeah, at some points, like, there was louder, and the other point, it was, like, smaller. Ah, so the thickness of the letters can also relate to the volume. Wow, this is going to be a tough one. And actually, I let the time the timer roll out, and I didn't stop anybody because this is just too awesome to see on the screen. This is fantastic. I I would have a hard time voting uh, for this one because we got some amazing use of color. We got some amazing use of space. I love the use that Elizabeth used of negative space. So okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a bonus minute. Uh, Ooh, just because I'm extra time. I'm so happy. It yeah. And it is for all the marbles. Double <laughs> points means you should get a little extra time. And Aaron, what made you think about warm colors versus cool colors for this sound? Well, you know, it, first of all, that was clearly the sound of a gong, right? And I think when most people envision what a physical gong looks like, the instrument, they think of it as being brass in color. So you automatically have like a assumption of what the instrument is and what kind of sound it makes uh and also it's just a very warm sound itself like you you often hear people associate music as being like warm or being cold and and i think that this is a warm sound so it deserves warm colors that's great that's awesome back to greg wow yeah. i don't even know what's going on in here this thing went from a, a <laughs> city car crash to like a a New York subway. I feel like the Warriors are going to come out and play. <laughs> I should draw the two bottles clinking. <laughs> I think that that was in this sound clip somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm basically shooting for a cacophony. Cacophony. That is a SAT word right there. So do you often find that you are challenged in terms of balancing the level of detail with the amount that you want to communicate? You've got a lot to say, but you don't want to overwhelm the reader? Uh, with me, I find that uh, clarity above all things. So in a lot of cases, simpler is the shortest distance between two points. If you if you over taking this drawing as an exception, if you overcrowd a thing, you may you may get you may the meaning may get lost in the in the muddle. Although in this instance, muddle is the name of the game or the sound yes. of the day. <laughs> And that is a beautiful muddle there. Now, Thank Eliz you. <laughs> Elizabeth, I see you also threw some color in with yours as well. And I like this. It's a very bright, rainbowy choice of colors. And, you know, of course, 
roosters are very bright colored creatures as well. So it sounds like you've definitely captured that. Um, and also, I, you threw in some, some, sound, some sound lines there, a little bit of energy coming off of it. When you hear something like a, a rooster, do you imagine that as sort of the, the, that spark and energy that comes off? Yeah. It's a nice sparkly sound. And for the colors that you chose, did you think, what, what colors do you think of when you hear the sound of a rooster? What do you hear in your imagination? Or what do you, what colors do you feel? I feel like red, yellow, and blue because those are like the colors of the rooster. Like the yellow beak and then it's red and blue. Nice, so the color choices are representative, much like, uh, like Aaron's gong, they're representative of the colors of the creature making that noise. Those are some powerful choices there, Elizabeth. <laughs> Greg is still going. He's adding, he's adding debris into his. <laughs> I see it's a couple of tires in there. I mean, wow. should, should, we, should we stop? I, I'm just going until you tell me to stop. <laughs> yes, Pens, what do you think, Jersey? Pens down, everybody. I think it's time that we go through and, and, and get our votes from the audience. Um, and I should announce that the prize today is a sticky note drawing that I completed recently of a um, angry, sad wrestler monster with his head on fire and everybody's booing him, a crying oh. wrestling figure. Um, okay, so for, for all the marbles, in other words, the sticky note drawing, um, let's put it to the audience to see who votes. Let's see who votes for Aaron Polk. Teacher! Excited kids. That's pretty good. All right. Who votes for Greg Shegel? <laughs> kids slightly more excited for Greg Shegel because I probably because of the mayhem uh, drawn with all of the parts and everything. And finally, let's go to Elizabeth. Let's see who votes for Cockadoodle Do. People are doing backflips for that cockadoodle dude. Yeah. Godzilla's dancing. <laughs> that was some enthusiasm. Was that a bear on a trampoline? <laughs> I think it was a bear on a trampoline because that, that's how excited everybody was holy about, holy. A, about Elizabeth's uh, sound effect. So I guess it looks like with, with a, a, a grand total of, of three points, Elizabeth takes the game. Oh, my gosh. Bravo. <laughs> well done. You cock a doodle did it. <laughs> so Elizabeth, Thank you, I, Elizabeth, I will be mailing you this sticky note drawing of a sad wrestler with his hair on fire. Um, so let's do a round, a round of uh, acknowledgments and thank everybody for being here and uh, letting everybody know where they can find their stuff. So uh, uh, Jeremy, if you want to like get everybody to, the, to do their last shout outs. Okay. Well, Elizabeth, being the winner, let's start with you and your beautiful comic, Duke and Jack in Halloween. So they can find that at your Etsy store? <laughs> awesome. And that Great is comic. Cousins, Cousin Comics Shop on Etsy. And you can find it. It will be linked with this video as well. One more time, Elizabeth. What's the comic about? It's about where Duke and Jack, they're taking a break from crime fighting and then uh, they're going to have normal life and they're going to find a costume for a party they're going to. All right. That's great. All right. And Aaron, so what are you currently working on and where would you like people to find your comics and your work? Uh, currently, I am working on... Uh, some more of the dog man stuff i'm working with dave pilkey on some more of his work uh and you can check out more of my work on my website that is www.aaronpolk.art awesome aaron thank you so much and greg thank you so much for having me <laughs> and greg yeah what is your current project you're working on and where would you like people to find you out in the world I'm currently working on a hodgepodge of freelance things that are moderately interesting, but not interesting enough to take up space here. 
But if you go to gregshigel.com, that's my full name, S-C-H-I-G-I-E-L, Greg with two G's on the end of it. Uh, that's where all my book stuff is. So picks, unique corns with links of where to buy all that stuff. My YouTube channel, also my name. If you search stuff sketched, I put up a video once a month. I should do more of them, but once a month I put up a video and it's me drawing. They're usually 15 minutes or less and I talk over what I'm drawing. Um, what else? Am I forgetting something? I'm on social media, Twitter and Instagram. My name, it's all my name. If you, if you follow my name, you'll find me wherever I am. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. This was fun. Thank you, Greg Shegel. All right. And Jeremy, where can we find more about you? Where are some places? What, what's one thing you hope people will check out today uh, based on what we've been after, after experiencing this event? Well, if you go to jeremy.net, that will link you to my website. You can find all of my work and comics there. There's also links to my newsletter. There's links to my YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.jeremy. Well, it's youtube.com slash Jeremy. From there, I, I live stream twice a month. Um, I also post videos about figure drawing, about comic creation, about art tools, and learning about everything in the creative process. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today, Jeremy. This was a lot of fun. Uh, and thank you to all of our contestants and uh, everybody who watched. Um, thank you, Jersey. Let's give it up for our, our host, Jersey. <laughs> Jersey for host. Thank you. Uh, and we'll be back with another one sometime soon. Until next time, uh, this has been the Super Comics Challenge. Uh, okay, bye. Promotional consideration provided by the Ann Arbor Art Center at annarborartcenter.org and the Kids Read Comics organization at kidsreadcomics.org. I'm Rob Stenzinger, and this has been Super Comics Challenge. Super Comics Challenge.